Hey guys, how you going? My name is Dom and in this video we're going to be learning how to create stylish HTML tables using some very basic CSS. So there are many good videos and examples out there of creating these nice looking tables using CSS and this right here is my own version of that. You can of course take this code, you can take this example and then tweak it to suit your own needs. It's very easy to do. So basically we're going to be converting this right here a bare bones HTML table with no CSS and convert it into this right here. So let's go back inside this file and take a look at the text editor. So we begin with all of this stuff right here. So I've got the HTML table markup, I've got the table head and also the table content. So inside here, let's first add a class to the table itself. Let's add a class of content table. And the reason for this is because we're going to be adding all of the CSS to this class right here. That's because sometimes you have other tables on your web page which you don't want this CSS to be applied to. For example, you may be using a table in your navigation bar or your footer. In that case, you don't want all of these fancy CSS styles to be applied to those tables, only the tables which are readable content by your user. In this case, it's going to be this one right here. So I'm going to, so I'm going to go back inside here, I go inside the CSS and target the content table class. The first thing to do is to add a border collapse of collapse. And this basically is one of the most popular CSS properties on tables. And basically, it's going to be uh, reducing the amount of space between your cells. So I'm going to save this and refresh the browser and pay attention to the spacing between the cells. If I was to refresh, we get this right here. It's a lot smaller, a lot tighter, and that is the reason for the border collapse property. Okay, uh, back inside here, let's also add a margin of 25px and 0. This ensures your table has some nice space between the content on the top and bottom. Okay. Also, a font size of 0.9 em. Uh, I like to have my font sizes inside tables to be a slight bit smaller than the content surrounding it. I think it looks a bit nicer and also it makes tables a lot easier to read or uh, sorry, a lot easier to fit on mobile devices due to the limited screen space. Okay, so that's the reason for the font size property right there. I'm going to also add a minimum width of 400 px and the reason for this is to ensure the table always looks nice and big um, no matter what the content inside of it is. So of course since it is a minimum width it will expand if needed. Okay so I'm going to save this and refresh and we have right here um, the essential structure ready to go on the parent table. We can now begin work on the uh, table heading row. Okay so back inside here um, let's target the CSS uh, selector for content table t head tr. So we can add a background color of a nice looking green, so 009879. You can, of course, change this to suit your own web page. And also a color of white and a text align of left. The reason for this is because uh, most browsers, including Chrome, like to center um, the table head columns. Um, I think generally it's a good idea to make sure that your um, columns and content are aligned in the same way. So of course if I was to refresh this now we can see we of course have that nice background color but also um, the table uh, uh, head columns are of course aligned properly with the table content below. So um, that's that right there. We can now add some padding between the cells. So back inside here, let's go and say, also actually one more thing, sorry. Um, you may also want to add the font weight property as being bold. This ensures on all browsers, um, of course, the, um, the heading columns are bold. Okay, so uh, back down here, let's now target the content table TH and also uh, content table TD. So, um, the cells inside the table header and also the table content. 
or table body. All right. So we're going to say padding 12px 15px. Okay. So of course it makes everything look a lot nicer with that padding right there. So I'm going to save this and refresh. And this right here can be considered a completed product. So let's add some more styles to make it look even better. All right. So uh, back inside here. Let's say content table, uh, T body TR, targeting every single uh, table row inside the table body. We're going to add a border bottom, a border bottom of 1px solid and then a light gray. Okay, so I'm going to save this and refresh. We have this result right here looking quite good. And back inside here, let's now target the good old classic having. Uh, every second row a light gray background color. So down here, I'm going to once again uh, begin with this selector. So every single TR inside the table body except the odd one. So uh, basically, nth of type even is going to target every single even row inside the table body. I'm going to say background color of being a very light gray. So we're going to say F3. F3, F3. Save this and refresh. We have this right here looking pretty good. Okay. Um, also, uh, typically you may see um, the border bottom of a table to be thicker and also the same color as the heading. So let's go ahead and go back inside here and target the last table row. So we can say content table T body TR last of type. And we can say border bottom, 2px solid, and the same color as the table header. So 009879. Once again, change this color to suit your own web page. I'm going to save this and refresh. We have this right here. So this, I think, is a completed styled table. Now, inside here, I've got some of, uh, you know, I've got a few extras going on, right? So um, the first thing is the box shadow. We have a bit of a border radius. We also have an active row. So let's go back inside here and add some of these optional properties to the table. So uh, back inside here, let's go up to the content table class and add um, a border radius of, uh, of 5px, 5px, 0, 0. This uh, makes the top left and the top right corners to be rounded, okay? And also along with that, you need to add the overflow hidden property. This is because your table rows actually still have their square borders. So um, having overflow hidden ensures that um, the border radius set on the table is gonna work correctly and display nicely, okay? Um, also, a box shadow of 0, 0, 20px and a 15% uh, opaque black. So I'm going to save this and refresh, and we have this right here. Looking pretty good, honestly. Um, cool. So now for the active row, you know, sometimes let's just say that Sally is logged into the web page. And this is, of course, her score. So you may want to actually highlight or um, display a particular row as being active. So in this case, I'm going to go back inside here and go down to the bottom here and uh, target once again the content table TR. But I'm going to say dot active row. So we're going to add a class of active row to the active row, and basically. We're going to say font weights of being bold and also a color. Once again, the same color as the table header. So 009879. Okay. And of course, in the uh, HTML, we can say here class as being active row. So I can save this and refresh the browser. And we have here our fully completed styled HTML table. All right, of course, you can change this. I'll leave a link to the code in the description so you can, of course, download it and change it to the way you like it. All right, uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you later.